My relationship with my brother is extremely competitive. It's about anything, it doesn't matter what sport. And we always want to compete with each other, but obviously I've always wanted to be better than him. So it's someone that I'm always chasing, which is great. My childhood was heavily revolved around sports. Uh, my whole family is extremely athletic. Uh, we're extremely competitive with each other and growing up with an older brother and sister, I think always trying to compete with them pushed me to work harder. And I, th I just think a lot of my childhood was based on um, just kind of the values and the things you learn through team sports from coaches, um, things that my parents really valued. My dad was a high school coach when I was uh, growing up, and we used to go to his practices all the time, me and my brother. So I think from a really young age, you know, we, we would be playing on you know, the mini hoops and nerf hoops and stuff like that. And um, it's something that you know, I, I, I don't really know when I started because I think I've just been around the game and playing it as long as I can remember, really. It was, you know, typical brother stuff, you know, the younger one that kind of always tags along and sometimes it gets annoying, but you kind of just have to roll with it because the parents want him to tag along. But I think that that's what grew us really close in our heyday. And, and even to this day, we talk a couple times a week. So we did everything together. So it, it was enjoyable, yeah. Growing up, we played together in Hoops Club in high school. We played two years together. And then college, we didn't really know what was going to happen. I mean, he had a lot of options coming out of high school. He was highly recruited. But he ended up picking Marquette, and it was a great year that we had together. And definitely going to cherish those memories forever. And it, you can't really take that for granted. The reason I chose Marquette was comfortability. I had my brother there. Uh, it was a little closer to home. and. I think at the time it was the right choice for me. Um, I graduated high school early because of injuries, and I don't know if I could have done that without having my brother be at Marquette, being closer to home, and if I had done that, gone to a different school would have been really hard. I really just want to win games. You know, at Marquette, we, we had made it to the NCAA tournament, and we had lost the first game, and at Michigan State, they have a, we have obviously a history of going to the Final Four, making deep runs in the tournament, and that's another reason why I came here, and I want to be a part of that. I want to go to a Final Four. I want to go to a national championship. Uh, I want to win a Big Ten, Big Ten tournament and, and Big Ten regular season. So those are all things that are goals of mine and all things that are always goals of our program. It came down to just what school kind of fit our interests and needs better and what kind of we liked better or gravitated to more and I gravitated to Virginia more and he gravitated towards Michigan State more and we were totally fine with that I mean originally we thought we might go together and do that whole realm again but um, it ended up splitting up which is it's good for both of us we're in a great spot we both love where we're at and I think it's helping us excel our games in the right way and um, we're having a lot of fun with it. Unlike most people, I got a second chance to choose MSU. And I think what I noticed is that Coach Izzo is gonna, he's gonna push you. He's gonna be there for you. He's gonna be a person or, or a coach that you can walk into his office anytime. And that's something that I think any player should really want, uh, that relationship with their coach. So just kind of that feeling that you're gonna go play for a Hall of Famer. Um, he's been doing this for so long, so wh wh whatever he says, even though you might disagree with it that day, um, he, he's got a plan and he, he knows he's got more knowledge in the game of basketball than you do. So just receiving that, that knowledge from a legendary coach uh, helped me get to where I want to go as a person and as a player as well is something that was really intriguing for me. You know, you see alumni come back here all the time like, like it's a big family. Uh, everybody feels connected and I love being around people that um, want to get to know more about you. Just generally good people that are excited to come here every day, even on a day that you know, they're not feeling well. Um, they're excited to be around each other, and you know, we're in this together as a, as a big family. It's not because we got to, it's because we get to. Get two and three, let's go. Get two, get two, get two. Get two. Get two. Questions? Tom, two, uh, every Spartan fan in the world's asking, any update on Joey? First and foremost, Joey was um, denied his waiver appeal. I'm devastated that I have to sit out his second season in three years. But I do believe that we have a tight team and we're gonna get through it. And he's gonna get through it. 
it was tough for him. I mean, obviously in high school he was hurt. Um, he kind of had an injury bug for two two out of like the three years leading up to college, and he finally got healthy at Marquette and was able to play and have a really good year. And then now he had to sit it out again, and I I know that really took a toll on him because he was just ready to kind of just let loose and show the world what he can really do, and he hasn't really had that opportunity lately. I knew that that whole kind of season for me that I was going to sit out, I was going to have to work on my game a ton because I wanted to come out of that redshirt season a much better player, a player that people had not seen the last time I played basketball. My brother was going through the same thing. You know, we, we weren't like cheerleaders, but we were trying to be our team's biggest supporter on the bench during practice. And we would often call each other and, and just talk about, you know, what cool guys we got to be on scout. I know Virginia played Virginia Tech and we, we had played Virginia Tech last year, so we got to be the same guy in scout. We talked a little bit about that and, you know, whether we had a good practice or not. So it was cool just to talk to him and, you know, talk about what he had learned at Virginia so far and what I'd learned here. We just kept each other going through that time off and knew that when it was our time to come, we were both going to be ready for it. As Henry up top, Hauser for five feet behind the arc. Everything is dropping. A new career high for Hauser. I'm really excited to get back on the court, uh, but I think what I'm most excited about is seeing my brother play again. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen him play, and obviously, you know, I can't wait to step on the court, but it's going to be really cool seeing him in a different uniform. I'm happy for him, you know, I I felt it was a little unfair at Marquette, you know, people, he came in and they, they kind of just expected him to be like me when, when he's a different player than I am and he has his own expectations and what he can do some things I can, I can do some things he can, but now he kind of can just come into his own and be himself and really show Michigan State fans what, what he's all about. It's definitely tough sometimes to wake up and and show up to the rink and work as hard as you can, knowing that things may not change for you. Hockey players aren't allowed to to show weakness. They have to play on broken legs, um, separated shoulders. But we're lucky enough that in 2020, there's a lot of people coming out, and the stigma is definitely shifting towards it's okay to reach for help. It doesn't it's not weakness. If anything, it's strength. To, to show that you're maybe not doing your best, that you are a little vulnerable. I think it's, it shows more strength than, than not saying anything. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, one of the coldest cities in the world. And growing up there, it was obviously a lot of hockey. Outdoor rinks were the, were the main attraction for me as a kid growing up with all my friends. I played a lot of hockey and a lot of soccer. And I started skating at three, and then hockey started, I think, five or six at the local arena. But I love growing up there, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. My mom was from Winnipeg with, uh, with Italian immigrant parents, and my dad himself was actually a Portuguese uh, immigrant kid. He came over when he was a young kid. And I mean, they've been, they've been two of my heroes for my whole life. I mean, learning the game for themselves and being able to teach me things was something that I look back on now that I'm older and realize that it was, it was pretty impressive. Uh, especially my mom who was an athlete, but somehow managed to learn a lot about the game of hockey and could give me a lot of, it, a lot of advice, which was often right, even if I didn't believe it at the time. And my dad um, instilled a great work ethic in me and, and always, always made sure I believed in myself. I was sharpening skates at the, at the pro shop that I worked at and I got a call from Joe Exter. I didn't believe it was him when, he, when I first picked up. I got the call and they, we started talking and then I did some research, talked to some people at Michigan State. I kind of fell in love with Michigan State as soon as the opportunity came up. I know I saw the history that they did have and the kind of spot that they were in in the last couple of years. I wanted to be part of building that, 
that new culture and bring them back to the championship team that they once were. So it was it was a no-brainer once uh, once they came knocking. We were lucky enough to come in with a pretty big class. There was eight of us for our freshman year, and we all gelled together pretty quick. So, and I was lucky enough to play a majority of the games freshman year. So I think my role on the team was being kind of a, an energy bug on the team, bringing a lot of energy onto the ice, having fun with guys, being a guy that everyone can trust and, and have fun with, and just a good team morale kind of glue guy. Uh, yeah, sophomore year was um, definitely a bit of a battle personally for me. I didn't, I didn't get in as many games as I wanted to, and that was a struggle as it's kind of the first time in my career where, where I've, where I've seen that. You know, not getting in the lineup, you kind of start to doubt yourself. And they always say that you should love going to the rink. Like it's something that you love to do. You're playing hockey, and there were some days where. I didn't want to be at the rink, and that was kind of that was new to me because hockey's always been, always been the thing that I loved. No matter, no matter what was going on in my life, hockey was always something that I could come to and hold on to. I knew it was certain, and now it was kind of slipping away. And that's when I kind of realized that, you know, maybe this isn't this isn't a normal thing to to deal with. I know a lot of people go through similar things, and I figured that me keep me buried deep inside isn't really going to help. So I think one of the biggest things that I did was go see, was go see um, a sports psychologist and being able to talk to him and just get a different perspective on things and getting a different way of viewing what was going on. I think that helped a lot. It definitely um, clicked a switch on how I treated every day. You know, it's something that's really evolved, and I, I think, you know, you know, back in the day, people would think that, you know, if you're talking to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, that, uh, you know, that's a sign of weakness. But now I think you see all, all the best players are, are working from the mental aspect of things. And, you know, sometimes when, when things are going uh, wrong, it's a good time, or, you know, you're struggling a bit. But sometimes uh, we like guys to, to, to meet with them when things are going right, just so you get that kind of feel as well. So it, it's a real big part of it, and I'm a, I'm a huge believer of uh, the, the power of the mind. And, and if you get that in the right place, um, I've always I've always felt that's a huge advantage, and if we can get the individuals in the right place, and the team in the right place, boy, uh, you can do some damage. And you know, going to the after my sophomore year, the summer, that's what I went in with, with that um, mentality that I'm not going to let that year happen again. I'm going to work hard. I'm not going to let myself be the reason that I don't play. So I use it as motivation to wake up every day, work harder than I've ever worked do extra when I needed to do extra, do extra when I didn't want to do extra. That kind of mindset is what, is what got me through it too. Gino, is, he's definitely matured and grown. He hasn't got a lot bigger physically. He's still, he's still the same, about the same size as freshman year. But no, he's, he's really grown into, uh, and developed into a great player. He, especially coming in from freshman year, he just, he was pretty raw and he had a lot to work on, but he did that and, and more. I'm impressed and definitely proud of Gino the way he's, he's developed. And a lot of people have, have a tough time bringing the courage to go talk to someone and, and show that, I don't want to say weakness because it isn't weakness, to show maybe that vulnerability and that it's okay. I think we're on the right path to getting everyone to be okay with reaching out, but it's definitely something that we need to continue to work on because there's a lot of people that still are, are afraid to ask for help because again, they think it's a weakness, but I can't. I can't say enough that it's not, it's not weakness, it's strength, and it's showing that you're vulnerable, which is completely okay. I think you know, what I went through taught me a lot, and I hope that if I see someone going through the same kind of struggle, I'll be the first guy to step up. I came in and I gained eight brothers right at the start with my class. We were, we were super lucky that we had a big class and we were closer than I ever thought we could have been, and it's been three years of that. And the guys who have come in, the guys who have left have all, have all been great guys who have made friendships with that'll last forever. I've learned a lot of things about myself through hockey, through, um, through the struggles, through the success. It's been a fun, fun three and a half, three and a half years now almost. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't trade it. Matrix, yeah!
It's Michigan State and Minnesota in the first of 20 Big Ten games on the schedule this season. The Gophers coming off a, a tough drubbing at home, and now they have to recollect themselves and go to work against a Michigan State squad that is now a little bit deeper today. Janae Kroom set to make her green and white debut. Now Michigan State with their first touch. Mia Cloud on the left wing, crosses over around a screen, pulls up mid post, and buries the jumper. Cloud, another mid-range, Jay buries it. Cloud into the front court, steps in for a three, and buries it! Mia Clowden from the right wing puts in the three ball in transition. Janae Crooms the first two points in her Spartan career. Offensive board by Lauren Ruers. Hand off to Mo Joyner in the lane, who lays it up and in. Corey Osmond with the dribble across the half court line. Osmond on the drive, gets the left block, draws the foul, and puts it in. Powell, and her pocket picked. That was like Nia Cloud who's doing it all today. Ahead to A-roll, she lays it good, and a foul. Clicking on all cylinders are the Spartans in this first half. Michigan State basketball, Winston, wide open for a right corner three, and she does not miss. Eliza Winston buries the right corner three. Winston's wide open again. Her three ball is good. She's got 11. Now Winston on the drive, splits two defenders, kicks it back out. Osmond knocks down the three ball. Ayrault staying with it. Count the bucket, going off the glass for two. Ayrault takes it right to the freshman. Into the left corner, Winston drives the baseline, weaves into the lane, righty hook shot is good. Man, that was a tough finish by Winston. She went through some contact, and that's a new career high. 18 points for Eliza Winston. From the wing, in the lane with a runner, left it well short, and Mo Joyner saved it. Oh, what a play by Mo Joyner. Mia Cloud, 25 points. Eliza Winston right behind her with a new career high, 20 point output. Big time dub for Michigan State. 81-68 the final. You already know what we're doing. First Big Ten dub. Well, it's a good morning to everybody around the great state of Michigan. And welcome to East Lansing and welcome into the Breslin Center. Well, today we have a big game. No, we're not playing Michigan. It's not the final four. We're not playing for a league title. Yes, we are indeed playing Oakland. But that's why it is a big game. We are actually getting to play a game. Tips up and controlled by the Golden Grizzlies. Carish on him really tight. Now goes over, down low to Aaron, back out to Langford for three ball, he got it. Long rebound, comes out to Rocket Watts, down court to Aaron Henry, he's going. Shots away, good, and we got a whistle. Got a two point deal. Here's a three by Gabe Brown, he got it. What's going on? That's three threes in the last 20 seconds. Here's Brown for three. Offensive rebound, put back, Malik Hall with the N1. With the ball, Lawyer, oh, an alley you pass down low to Bingham, who grabs it with one hand, puts it up, and it's in. All right now, Williams, down the lane he goes, floaters away, it is blocked over there by Aaron Henry, and it goes all the way down to Rocket Watts on the breakaway two. And that's the way this half will draw to a close. As Michigan State leads this stubborn Oakland team, 44 to 40, and take it. As we get back to action, Michigan State will start with the basketball. Rocket Watts at the top of the key. Of course, Oakland playing the zone. Watts goes right at it. Baseline shot off the glass. High off the glass. Bounce pass. Lawyer in the wing. Gabe Brown drives the baseline. What a slam! 71-60. Three ball keeping Oakland in this thing, and it goes down low to Marble again. This is this is great preparation for some of those high scorers. Whoa. Hoiberg, he may go all the way, and he does. Jack well, Hoiberg just took off, and nobody picked him up for the easy layup. Hey, he's a basketball player. He read that perfectly. We've got a final on this Sunday afternoon. It's Michigan State, a season high, 109 and Oakland 91. Up next scheduled will be a trip to Evanston to play Northwestern to begin the Big Ten season.